Hello everyone, my name is Jenna Meyer. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. I am a teacher on OutSchool and VIP Kid. And in this video, I am going to talk about some things to avoid when you are teaching on OutSchool specifically. But I suppose these things could apply to VIP Kid and other teaching platforms. So some of these things have happened to me and so I've learned along the way of what not to do, what to avoid, and how to fix it. So I wanted to share these things with you and hopefully you can avoid these experiences when you start teaching or maybe you're just still new in the process and learning how you're doing things. So I hope this helps you and if it does I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and I will be putting out two to three videos a week every week on out school, VIP kid, homeschooling, just teaching in general. The first thing you need to avoid on out school specifically is not making your entrances and your exits to your classroom an awkward experience for the student and you and the parents. Um, it's different than VIP Kid. If you have been a teacher on VIP Kid, you normally say, hi, how are you? Are you happy? And then show a picture of happy and it's a lot of TPR. And um, it's just different because out school students are typically not ESL students. So they speak English and they are fluent obviously in English. So you want to have a plan for how you are going to greet the students when they come into your classroom. I'll often say, hi Isaac, how are you today? It's good to see you. Can you see our friends? wave at your friends. So I'll encourage the kids to interact with each other when the, everyone's starting to enter the classroom. And then I like to introduce each student and have them share something really simple. Maybe it's their, what's your favorite color? Or what is your favorite food? Something very simple that's non-threatening for the students so they feel comfortable sharing it and they feel confident sharing it. And I always give the students the opportunity to pass. Some students don't want to speak out in front of a group like that. I know I sometimes am shy in new group settings, so I never make students participate. If they want to pass, they can just go like this, or mom can jump in and say pass today. Another thing I do with my students at the beginning is I like to do a little sharing time. So I do a game called Would You Rather? And I'll show a picture down here. It's a really simple game question sharing opportunity. And I say, would you rather eat a donut or or a popsicle and they just say which one they would rather eat or would you rather ride in a motorcycle or a tractor I just made that up but just something really light and fun and it gets the kids getting to know each other and breaks the ice a little bit it's really sweet and then at the exit, avoid that being awkward too. So I like to sing a song at the end, maybe a goodbye song. Last time in my last class, we did a quick head, shoulders, knees, and toes just for a little fun time with each other at the end. And then at the end, I also always give them a call to action. So I like to give them something to work on um, for the next class. So last class I did a class about opposites and I gave them a call to action. I said, look for opposites in your home for the next day and tell mom or dad when you find an opposite. So just really something simple. It's not homework. It's not an assignment. It's just a quick, eh, try to do that if you can. And it just gives them something to take away from your class. The second thing to avoid on OutSchool is you need to avoid kids waiting in the waiting room. I know this sounds really simple, and it is really simple, but I've heard some horror stories from other teachers that they have had kids sitting in their waiting room for 10, 15 minutes, and they didn't know it. So there is a button, and I will show you in a minute, there's a button on Zoom, which is the platform we use on OutSchool, and you can click the chime on and that will chime when a student enters the waiting room so you will be able to hear and see what students are waiting in the waiting room and then you can just easily accept them into the classroom so <laughs> okay so everyone he hello everyone I am in zoom right now hopefully you can see my screen and I'm showing you how to turn the chime on so you go under participants right here and this will go in and out so I always have the participants listed up here in this bar and then down on the right hand side you'll see the three dots click that and you want to play 
enter and exit chime so you want that to be clicked and usually i don't have to do that at every um for every class, usually I click it once, and if I'm using Zoom on a consistent basis, it stays um, activated for me. So I don't have to click that every time, but I always double check because I wanna make sure that that chime goes off when students enter and exit the classroom. So that's it. I hope this is helpful for you, and back to the video. <laughs> Tip number three to avoid is avoid poor sound quality. So this happened to me the first couple classes I did, I had some problems with my sound quality. And what was happening was I like to play music in my class and we sing a lot of songs and do some silly brain breaks. And um, the sound wasn't coming through to the students. On my end, I had a speaker hooked up and it sounded great for me, but I had students not following along. I could tell they just weren't engaged. And then by my second or third class of this, I had a parent say that the music was really, really soft. And even a student was saying, I can't hear it. It was it was really embarrassing. And so, you know, I was trying all kinds of things in the classroom and nothing was working. So I thought about it and I did some research and it turns out that Zoom, and you maybe know this, but Zoom highlights the video and audio of whoever is speaking. So if I have a song and I'm, all, I'm encouraging all the students to sing along, um, they're all singing. And so Zoom is like, where does it highlight? Who does it um, promote for speaking? Is it my song? Is it the student? So it was just like up and down, up and down. So that was kind of a mess. And so what I did um, just on my last couple of classes is I muted, I muted every student and that really took care of the problem. But I also invested in a really good microphone and I'm not gonna show you quite yet, but I will show you in a minute the microphone that I have. It's a Zoom product, totally unrelated to Zoom, the um, online conversational platform but it's a really good microphone and I'm excited to use it in my classroom because I think it's going to improve the sound quality by a ton. The other thing I invested in is a boom box because I was playing my music just through the computer and that wasn't working. So I got this one from Target. It's a Jensen brand, super simple. I like how slim it is. It's kind of cute. So that really plays through the speakers on that boom box, it plays a lot better. And then my microphone picks it up so much clearer. And then the students being muted just makes it all work really well. The only thing with Zoom that's tricky when students are muted, I sometimes, but I sometimes can't unmute the students. So parents have to sometimes physically hit that unmute button on each on their own computer, which can kind of be tricky if parents aren't right there when you need them to be unmuted and then speaking with you. So that's the only tricky thing with Zoom. But if you're aware of it, you can tell parents in advance that you're gonna be playing music and when the music is done, they can unmute their child. <laughs> the fourth thing that is really important to avoid is avoid kids jumping on their beds or jumping around the room behind you, not participating. This happened to me in my very first out school class and looking back on it, I probably didn't do a very good job of doing lots of different activities. It was, I did incorporate different activities, but he was a little bit on the young side and so it wasn't quite appropriate for him. And it was my first class, I was pretty nervous to teach. So I would try to avoid kids jumping on the bed or being distracted by incorporating lots of different activities. So try to do something hands-on if you can get them jumping around or making letters with their bodies or tracing letters in the air or words in the air. Um, do read-alouds with them. Um, just think I do, we do, you do. So model it for them, do things together, have them practice independently. Um, what else do I have on my list for getting students to stay engaged? Um, 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 um. Oh, lots of songs. We do a lot of singing in my class. Um, games. I am going to do another video on games in a little, in a few days probably. But I have made my own bingo cards using Canva, and I'll maybe do a video on that soon. But um, that's been a fun game to incorporate. And bingo, there's it's pretty universal. You can do all kinds of stuff. So my bingo game was shapes, and that was really fun and and just a fun way for kids to learn. And then um, just lots of brain breaks. We do shake your sillies out, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Simon says um, just to keep them loosened up 
up and engage throughout the entire lesson. And then, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. The fifth thing to avoid when you're teaching on out school is avoid ending early. So I think this is really important. I've never ended early. Usually I run over and that's a problem, but I really want to respect parents' time and money because they have paid for this class. So if by chance you end early, two or three minutes early, make sure you have backup activities ready to go. So maybe there's a picture find that you have made on a Google Doc, or maybe you go back and you ask some more would you rather questions, or maybe they do a quick little brain break, or maybe you have an extra read aloud. So just make sure that you are planned to the T and have more activities than um, too few activities because it's better to have too much than too little. You can always create a second class. Maybe you end early and, or maybe you don't get through all the material and you say, parents, would you like me to add another class at this time next week and you guys can sign up and we'll finish our material at that class. So that's maybe even a good way to get new, to get repeat families if you have lots of material that you still need to cover. So those are just my thoughts. I <laughs> hope it's helpful. I know that the first couple classes on OutSchool can feel nerve wracking and I felt nervous and awkward with it, but once you get going, you'll really get into a groove and try to avoid the things that I mentioned. And I hope it's been a helpful video for you. And if you have any ideas of what to avoid, comment down below. And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.